This is chapter 3 selections, programming exercise 7, financial application monetary units. So what we're going to do is modify listing 2.10, compute change.java to display the non-zero denominations only, using singular words for single units such as one dollar and one penny, and plural words for more than one unit such as two dollars and three pennies. All right, so what do we do? How are we going to do this? So what we're going to do is do this step by step. What's going to happen is we're given this piece of code, this uh, Java class, this Java file, and we're going to read it line by line. I'm going to try to understand how this class work. After we have a good understanding of how this class work, then we find out where we can make the change in the code. Right? We have to figure out what we could change without uh, breaking the code and where we could change it. And then after that, we update the code to the requested change that it want us to do. And then we test to make sure that there are no issue with what we did and that the code will continue to work without any issues. All right, so beginning at step one, read and understand what it does. So here we have that, uh, that code here. And we're gonna start from the beginning at line 16 all the way to line 37 and try to understand what it does and how it works. So right here from line 16, we see that it's creating a scanner called input equals new scanner.system.in. So we know what scanner does, right? We're able to use scanner to read the user input on the terminal and then store it onto another variable. All right, and then the next line of code, we got system.out.print, enter an amount in double. For example, 11.56. So what it's trying to say, this line of code, uh, the string here is saying, or asking the user to enter a double value and a double value is a value that is uh, that has a decimal value following right or floating point number so if it's just 11 then that will be considered a whole number an integer and not a double value number or number with decimal values if it's a number that has um, any decimal value like uh, 11.007, 11 point or 15.75, uh, and that'll be considered double value, right? And let's run this program and see how uh, how the flow works so far. So first off, instantly starts at from the beginning, right? And then it goes and it sees this uh, string right here. Um, the statement right here and it says create a scanner but of course you don't see that on your end so all it's being done behind the scene next on line 18 that's where we first see something that's ha going on visually for us and it says to display a string enter an amount in double for example 1156 now what happened next is uh, let's put it like this uh, it is expecting us to input a double value that's going to be stored into a variable called amount. All right, so right here, the program is still running in the background expecting us to store a value. For example, let's just say 1156. If I was to click enter, this value 1156 will immediately be stored into this variable right here called amount. And after that, it will go jump to the next line of code from 21 to 30, it will do a whole bunch of calculations. So let's simplify. Let's understand what these calculations does and how it works. And before I do that, I'm going to actually click enter to store the value. That way we will have a visual right here, which we will be able to con uh, compare that to, right? Now we're going to start with remaining amount. Remaining amount is basically the amount times 100 and then cast it as an integer. Why is that happening? 
Well, amount is basically a double value. A double value cannot store into an integer value and has to be an int to store an int. So by casting it, you're turning this double value right here into an int. But why is it multiplying by 100? Well, in this case, what we're expecting from a user is to enter a uh, an amount in double, but no greater than uh, uh, well, no greater than two decimal places. But if they do, that's okay because that is resolved right here. So what happened is if they were to enter three uh, decimal place, five, six, seven, by multiplying by hundred, you will get one one five six point seven. But then when you cast it to an int, which is a whole number, you get rid of that uh, integer value. So let's take a look and let's see how that works, right? Let's say I do 567, click enter. It'll completely, uh, hmm, well, I should just actually, it'll completely ignore the 7 here and calculate uh calculate the value as if the 7 wasn't there because it completely ignored it when you cast it to an int. So if you would take a look, 11211, even though I put 1156, 5, 6, uh, 11.567, uh, when you run it again with just 1156, you get three, uh, it'll return this pretty much the exact same value like before. All right, now what's next? Well, we want to find out uh, the number of dollars inside 1156. So what we do, what do we do? Well, remember, 11.56 has been multiplied by 100, which now equals to 1156. To figure out the amount of dollars in 1156, we simply divide it by 100. By dividing 1156 by 100, what we get is how many times 100 goes into 1156, which is 11 times. Therefore, 11 gets stored into number of $1 because there are $11 in 1156, and that's exactly what you see here. All right, now, uh, after we figure out how many dollars we have, we don't need the total as 1156 anymore. We already uh, grab a, a eleven dollars and we uh, stored it into the number one dollar uh, variable here and the next thing we want to do is find the remaining amount of quarters so if we no longer need the eleven dollars right here what do we do well we mod it mod it by a hundred if you mod 1156 by 100 you get the remainder and the remainder is 56 and that's what is being stored as the remaining amount, 56 cents left. And to find the number of quarters, divide it by 25. By dividing by 25, you get two, because two, there are two quarters in 56 cents, and that's exactly what it shows right here. All right, and you keep doing this until you figure out number of dimes, nickels, and pennies, following this simple step of modulus and division. All right, and finally, we just simply display all of that out, and this is exactly what we get. So hopefully with that explanation, we're able to solve for step one, read and understand how this Java class work, or Java file, or this uh, piece of code work. All right, now our next thing we have to do is find out where we can make the change in the code. So as a quick review, what we want to do is display the non-zero denomination only. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at the code, it is saying that there are zero dimes in this. If we uh, were to break it down, there are $11 in this, and then after you move the $11, there's only 56 cents left. Then you find out how many quarters there are. Well, there are two quarters in this. And then if there are two quarters, that's 50 cents, 50 cents, well, then you move the 50 cents and you get only six cents left. And therefore, there are zero dimes, but one nickel and one penny left. 
Now the issue here is zero dimes should not be showing. If there are one penny, it should say one penny with the Y at the end and not the IES. Same with the nickels. It should say one nickel but not one nickels. All right, so that's what we have to solve. And that's actually quite easy. What we're going to do is simply uh, add some if and else statement in here. We'll just say, all right, why don't we simply just change this print, uh, this string right here. Instead of uh, just displaying the string, we're going to just do a little bit of a uh, small test to test whether uh, we need to display it or not. And if we need to display it, how should we display it? So I identify, I know that this is the only place I need to change this uh, system to out that print line statement. Everything else in the code works perfectly fine as it is. So those part, so this part of code I do not have to change and I should not have to change unless I want to make uh, uh, some other uh, change to the uh, equation formula or or display it in another way, right? Or for example, if I want to make sure that the user enter the correct double value, and I could change that. But for now, let's not overcomplicate it and let's just do the simple step. So what we're going to do, let's comment this out for now. Uh, let's close this up. And what we're going to get is simply um, the your amount 1156 consists of, well, nothing so far. We're going to solve that on our own. And we're going to solve it line by line. So it will be simple and easy to visualize. Of course, you can make it better. Um, after you have a good visual understand or understanding how this works, you can always simplify my uh, example or add a little more information, more depth into it. So the first thing I want to solve is the dollars. I want to calculate for the dollars first. So I want to check. What if the user entered 56 cents? So that means there's going to be zero dollars. If there's going to be zero dollars, then I shouldn't mention dollars at all. So simply I, I'm going to say if dollars, if number of one dollars is greater than zero or let's see uh, then I'll do another check if number of dollars equal one then I'm going to say uh, I'm going to calculate I'm going to grab this and paste in here. Uh, let's see. It's actually system out print. Paste that in here. Now this right here is I'm only expecting one dollar. Number of dollar is just one. So one dollar. Okay. Else I'm expecting more than one dollar. I'm gonna grab this, paste in here and put the S right here. And let's run it. So let's run it with, how about just 56 cents? Well, with 56 cents, um, let me just fix that. No. with 56 cents, there are no dollars in here. So I'm not gonna display anything. And that's exactly what I want. I don't wanna display anything if there are no dollars to display. Now, if there are $1, $1.56, then it'll just say your amount is $1, singular, not plural. All right, and then if it's more than $1, if it's $11, then it'll say, I will have the plural right here, $11, all right? And that's all we pretty much have to do for the next uh, item which is quarters 
dimes, nickels, and pennies. So let's make our life easier. Just copy that, paste that down here. Instead of number of dollars, let's do number of quarters. All right, put that there, quarter, fix this string here. Paste that here and add S. And let's run that again. So if there are no quarters, we'll just put $1. And let's just say $1, but no quarters. Okay. If it's one quarter, then it'll just be one quarter, singular, not plural. And if there are more than one quarters, more than one quarter, ah, oops, did I make a mistake? Yes, I did. Now it should say three quarters. So let's find out uh, where I made my mistake. Oh, found it right here. Okay. Now the reason I made that mistake is because if equals equals one number of dollars equals one, then print one. Uh, then it'll, it'll, then before it'll, it worked because uh, it was singular, and it's looking at the dollars, but. I'm not looking at the quarters. By fixing this mistake, there we go. Now it's looking at the quarters and it's comparing the quarter with a quarter, with a single quarter. And if it's not a single quarter, then it must be more than one because we check the case that's not zero. Uh, and of course, it shouldn't be a negative. Of course, we'll add uh, more complexity and more checks in later exercises, all right? So 175, that's three quarters. So we're good with the dollars, the quarters. Next is the dime, nickels, and pennies. The whole thing. It's very easy to make a mistake with copy and paste. But at this point, everything should make sense, right? Number of dimes. Let me fix that here, here. Here, here, dime, and dimes. Uh, number of nickels. Fix that here, here, nickel, and nickels. And lastly, number of pennies. Y I yes. There we go. Run that. Let's do a check. Make sure that work. And of course, remember before, back to our usual eleven fifty six. Now there you go. It has eleven dollars, more than one dollar, so eleven dollars, as two quarters, one nickel, not plural. No dimes before zero dimes and it was showing zero dimes. This time it's not showing zero dimes and one penny. So with that, with a few if else, if else, if else, we're able to uh, better display our uh, uh, the amount of money we have uh, in dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies, and we're able to display uh, display it grammatically correct in a way, right? And that will be it for this exercise.